Welcome to Midweek Connect. This is where we highlight what's going on locally and just people who are making an impact during this pandemic. And today we're gonna highlight teachers, educators uh, of all grade levels. Uh, this is Teacher Appreciation Week. And so we have Mr. Daniel Thorpe. Uh, he is a secondary school educator here in the Valley. And we're going to just talk about uh, the online education experience and, and the challenges of that and the successes of that. And really most importantly, how to care for our kids. Uh, for our kids to lose their school experience, especially for our, our seniors, uh, it's really kind of heartbreaking. But our educators are making the most of it throughout the Valley, public and private schools. And uh, so, Daniel, welcome. Thanks. Glad you're here. Yeah, me too. And thanks for all that you do. I mean, you know, um, being the, the president of a, of a school, to, to be around the school environment every day under normal situations, it's it's a high calling. I mean, you you are caring for kids, all kinds of different kids, with all kinds of different learning uh, uh, capacities and abilities and desires and skills, and and it's already such an amazing profession. And here a pandemic hits, and now everybody's at home. Yeah. And within a matter of days, you gotta you gotta go online. So describe how you and your faculty partners manage that incredible transition in such a short period of time. Yeah, I, I think the most important thing is in such a short period of time. We're, we're used to, on a daily basis, just changing things right. if they need to be changed. Things pop up, things surprise you. They don't go exactly the way they planned, but I mean, no one, no one can plan for this. <laughs> right. um, and so it was a big, a big task as all of us, all the teachers kind of got together and were just, what, what is gonna happen here? <laughs> yeah. um, so it was, it was terrifying to kind of walk through it. Um, but as we got together, as we discussed, I thought it went over such a, so well that we were able to kind of brainstorm, bounce ideas off of each other, and, and really kind of get started on a on a long journey ahead. Yeah. Um, and so far, it's been going, I think, as about as well as it could go. Well, I would completely agree with you. And you mentioned uh, your faculty team members, right? Yeah. Because teaching is not just a solo profession. You might think you have a teacher in the classroom, but you have partners and oh, yeah. you, you, you have these friendships and professional relationships that really bring out the best in each other, yeah? I think, I think the other teachers and the faculty, um, I mean, no one could do it without that whole group together. E even just in the small conversations, um, saying, hey, I don't know what to do about this. What are you doing here? The ne necessity of those conversations when we moved online you know, doubled, tripled. It just became so much more important. You realize how essential it is to have a team of people behind you and with you. Yeah, for sure. And one of the things that I, I've noticed a, a lot, and I'm sure this happens in every school, is if one kid is struggling, email blast goes out to everybody. Hey, have you heard from whoever, Adrian? Have you heard from, is, is, is she out there and where is she? I'm a little bit concerned. You know, is anybody hearing anything? And everybody just rallies together like instantly because of the, the care you have for every kid, right? Yeah, uh, people reply to emails really quickly now. Yeah. It's, it's incredible. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's exactly what it is. Hey, I, it's, and none of them are, I mean, they're not negative. It, right. It's just like, yeah. hey, I'm, I'm trying to figure out what's going on with the student, do you guys know? And it's been cool to team up and, and be like, yeah, they've been in my class participating. Let's figure out where the disconnect is. Let's do what we can to help. I mean, I, I know of teachers that have even gone, uh, you know, safely uh, yeah. to students' homes sure. to like check up, to like email met online. So it's, cool. yeah, rallying around behind students has been kind of the number one goal this whole time. Well, and that just shows the care and the heart of educators. I mean, yeah. this is a, it's a profession that has, you know, very unique um, parts to it that, that there's some sacrifices. Yeah. Right. There's sacrifices to this to this calling, but the heart is just is just there. You're in it because you care for the kids, yeah. and and uh, when you see kids struggling, let's say during during the pandemic, your heart goes out for them, and then you rally your team. Let's give these kids our best. Let's reach them however we can. Yeah. I mean, I I, I you know I do what I can, but I was amazed at hearing some of the things that teachers that I know here have been have been doing for students. That's cool. You know, I, I was going in and going like, oh, I'm doing this, this, and they're like. Yeah, I, well, I did this, and it just shocked me. Wow. <laughs> so yeah, it's it's just I'm continually shocked at how above and beyond the teachers are That's going cool. to care for the students. So That's very cool. Yeah. So you know, going from live in the classroom, personal interaction, you kind of take that environment for granted, right? It just is what it is, oh, yeah. and it's always that way until it's not. Yeah. <laughs> and then everybody's at, at home. Um, where have you seen some maybe benefits to online education? Are there any? Yeah, I'd say efficiency is probably one of okay. them. Um, what moving to online education did was, one, it helped you realize, okay, so these little bits are really important, and how can we recreate you know, those conversations, those side 
you know, gotcha. comments that we really go off of. But it's also said, hey, where can we, where can we, you know, cut the fat? What, what can be communicated in an even more efficient way? Since we're having to do it online, we have a limited amount of time. It helps you prioritize, I think, both for students and for teachers. Um, and so that's been really good. I think just that perspective on the courses that we're teaching has been helpful. That's cool. So just get right down to what's critically important, focus on that. Yeah, what, what is most important? Because yeah. you don't have that whole time. You don't have the hallway conversations to try to make up for anything. Gotcha. Um, and not that we'd ever rely on those things, yeah. but, but it really makes you go, okay, I, I got to make sure that we are doing the most important things so that students feel supported and they're getting what matters. Mm. It, that, that's fascinating. As I've been kind of monitoring, you know, our own situation and, and uh, you kind of have some student expectations, some parent expectations and, and some ideas about maybe the way online education should be and, and everybody's got opinions. <laughs> and, uh, that's uh, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> make a note, everybody has opinions. <laughs> and when it comes to your own kids, you know, those opinions become very, very strong. Yeah. But you mentioned kind of a focus in, in efficiency. In, in a school environment, normally day-to-day -day on site, there's all kinds of things that happen. Um, but I would say the lecture time isn't the big picture school, no. right? Yeah. But when it comes to you know Zoom or Google uh, classes, it it's, it's becomes that time. It's a compressed time, and it really has got to reach these kids, mm -hmm. right? And then all the other stuff that happens outside, all the coordinating outside of that focused, you know, classroom time in front of the computer, that's a ton of work. And parents don't often see that. So here's what here's, and this is why I appreciate <laughs> educators yeah. here at Rancho and everywhere, is the class time from the parents' perspective has shrunk hmm. because kids are in, they're not in front of a computer yeah. watching lectures for six or seven hours a day. That's a nightmare. Yeah. Oh gosh. But they get their content, they get their instruction, but then there's a lot of other other stuff that happens. But I think teachers are probably working more now than, than live, right? In my experience, that would absolutely be true. Um, on, a, on a personal level, it has doubled or tripled really? in, in, okay, wow. in just weight and time. Yeah. Um, because you want to make sure that they are getting everything that they can get in the actual classroom. And, um, and I, think, I think everyone knows this to an extent, but I think teachers on a day-to-day -day basis really live it, is knowing um, if we could just boil down everything that's happening in the classroom into you know a few pages or a, or a short lecture um, then we would yeah. but that's it's not what the class is right. it's the relationship it's the conversations the, dialogue, the right. dialogue and discussion and so trying to bring as much of that out of the classroom you cannot get it all mm -hmm. but to get everything that you can um, it does take some a monumental effort on, on the part of, of the faculty and the teachers together uh, to get there and I think uh, I've seen so many do such a great job that's cool. Yeah, well, we're certainly appreciative appreciative of you and the whole team. Now, uh, o overall, it has been a really good experience, but there are kids who are struggling yeah. with this. And uh, uh, how or why do you see students struggling with online education? Why and why? In some cases, certainly not all, but mm -hmm. in a minority of cases, kids are really struggling with this. Uh, why is that? Do you think? Yeah, I think when we're answering why, we all have a unique ability to kind of feel that ourselves as most people have moved into working from home right. and moving to this online change, not just students. And so with students, I think it's just amplified in, in terms of you, you can't just find a secondary you know, conversation on the side and right. double check on something. Right. It takes an email, it takes a, a meeting. Um, so there's a lot of organization in going, when is this due? What do I have to keep track of? Right. Um, we've seen students emails, you know, their inboxes go from one or two messages to dozens to wow, okay. you know so many that it's really hard to keep track of the amount of information that is being received. So that's one challenge for sure. Um, and then another one is just simply processing information. We don't all process information the same and that's something that teachers are always trying to um, make possible in the classroom to address from all these different angles. And adding an online component on top of that um, kind of creates, sometimes it can create for some students a barrier between getting there. Um, and so a lot of the work that we're doing as teachers is trying to find a way around that online barrier, whether that be making phone calls, just walking through step by step, um, and just reaching out to make sure that no one feels like they're getting a lesser experience than other students in the class. That's very good to hear, uh, that you're going to try to find a way to, to reach different kinds of learners, because mm -hmm. there are some learners that 
hey, bring it on. Bring on the technology. Bring on the dozens of emails. I've got it wired and they've got their calendar. Yeah. They're all set, right? The planners, color coded. It, 100%, 100%, right? <laughs> it's not me. Mine looks like just a stack of random papers and I'm exactly. just trying to find it. <laughs> but a lot of kids are, are like that as well. Right. You know, their brains are, are just in a different spot. And so maybe the online learning environment just is a little more challenging to, mm -hmm. to them. But th there's some other dynamics as well. So, you know, for example, kids who are at home, they may have both parents at work. Mm -hmm. And so now they are completely reliant on their own oh, yeah. uh, worlds. And they don't have necessarily a teacher kind of walking with them or parents, they're at work, they're not walking with them. And so they can kind of just feel a little discouraged and maybe just kind of give up a little bit. Yeah. Um, and there's also uh, families that are really struggling. They're mm -hmm. struggling relationally. They're str struggling with stress. Um, you know, there's maybe more fighting in the home. There's just, you know, pandemics kind of bring yeah. stress. Uh, and, and sometimes the kids can feel that deeply. So there's a lot of personal emotional stuff going on and here they are supposed to succeed online. Um, so I love the care of, of the teachers because it's not just about getting information to these students so they can regurgitate it on a test. Right. It's so I, much more than that. How would you articulate that? I think one of the, one of the good benefits that's come from this is in, in the midst of all of that. I mean, I, I know of, uh, students in particular that I've that I've heard and experienced that are watching their younger siblings while they're trying to oh, yeah. take care of classes and they're they're cooking and you know just people's responsibilities and duties have changed and some students have it very difficult at home and some don't it just depends and so I think the really big benefit here is uh, through those relationships that we've got to have you know checking on those students those emails that go out, hey do you know what's going on that moment when we get to connect with the student and say hey can you can you let me know how I can help and hearing those stories, it's just been great in relationship and getting to know and, and walk, you know, we, we say university ready, life ready. That's the life ready part of it is how do we live life like this? Mm. Um, and so with all those different challenges, I mean, there's the same amount of ways to meet those challenges. Um, and it's it's hard sometimes to find them, but we're working at it. Well, I appreciate it so much. And, and uh, you know, that heart to care for each kid where they're at in their context, perhaps will deepen not just our school, but every school to say we are connecting with these kids and hearing their stories maybe more than we ever did before. Yeah. And we get to know their stories in a very personal way and we get to care perhaps as we've never had before. So so that there could be a, a blessing there that perhaps, um, you know, families won't be the same coming out of this. Schools won't be the same coming out of this. We're gonna be deeper and better as a result, I think. Yeah, I, I think it really shows us what's special about mm. the school experience. Yeah. It's not the classroom. Well, not the posters on those walls. It's really those those students and the teachers and us getting to know them and walk with them and be with them. And I think when we come back, and whenever that may be, yeah. uh, that it's gonna it's gonna all be in our minds about how special those relationships are. And I think we're gonna value them in a special way when we come back. And I don't know if that'll go away. Yeah. Well, I hope not. I hope not. Yeah, yeah me yeah. too. I mean, we're in the process of planning. Okay, what, what is fall going to look like? Yeah. It looks like it's going to look like this, but it might look like this. And so we're trying to contingency plan everything. And if you yeah. haven't figured it out already, uh, Daniel's a Rancho Christian teacher. <laughs> That's but, right. But we want to we want to <laughs> thank every yeah. teacher, and we want to just say during Teacher Appreciation Week, you know, we uh, we applaud every teacher Absolutely. who has this calling. We believe public and private school, Christian or secular school, a calling from God yeah. to care for these kids. Um, because if if you're not in it to care for the kids, you probably wouldn't choose this profession. Yeah, no, not at all. Yeah, it's been truly a unifying experience. Yeah. As I've talked with other teachers at other schools, and you go, oh man, we're all <laughs> we're all doing this together. Yeah. We have a whole separate set of challenges depending on what school it is, but just being able to go, man, you, you want, you're trying to figure out how to reach your students yeah. too, like me too. <laughs> That's right. So we're all doing this together. It's, it's Yeah, it's been unifying for sure. That's cool. Yeah. Well, it, I am very proud of Rancho Christian. We were the first to get out there with online education and we have done a, a great job, as good a job as I could even imagine. And, and to hear, you know, you and the faculty kind of say, hey, we're giving it our all. We can't imagine that it could have gone any better. But still, every day, I'm sure you're learning and growing and developing That's the way sure. you did when you were on site, right? Yes. And uh, and some powerful long-term you know, lessons are going to be learned as we learn to care for our students even better. Absolutely. So for this Teacher Appreciation Week, we want to say to every single teacher out there, every faculty member of every school, uh, we love you. We appreciate you. Thank you for caring for our kids. 
And, uh, and the work you're doing is really a calling by God, and we could not be more grateful. So during this appreciation weekend, we applaud you. Yes. Yay, absolutely. team. Applause, applause. <laughs> <laughs> There's nobody here. Uh, <laughs> but thank you very much, and thank you for being a part of Rancho Christian. Thank and, you. And uh, we look forward to ending the school year well. Graduation plans are coming together, which is oh, exciting. I can't wait. I'm so excited. It's going to be really cool. We're going to yeah. have like a, this drive-in. Anyway, I can't say. It's going to be great. Secrets. <laughs> Secrets, yeah. So that's all coming together. And then uh, we are looking forward to being on site in the fall. Oh, yes. Yeah, that'd be great. Uh, it might be a little bit different, but we're going to make the best out of it. It's going to be super safe and exciting. So, uh, Daniel, thanks again. Wish I can give you a shake and a hug, but, Thank you know, you, yeah. <laughs> we've got our mask. Yeah. <laughs> Take care. It's so good to be able to connect with so many of you throughout the week. As we close today, I just want to remind you of just a couple things. I hope you join us this coming Sunday for our church online. All of our campuses, Temecula, Murrieta, and Espanol have live streaming services. Just visit rancho.tv for more information. Also make sure that you're subscribed to our YouTube channel, Rancho United, so you won't miss anything from us. And we hope to see you again next time.